Good morning, Glory from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry. I've been away for a little while because my family has been visiting here in the hollow before they move out of the country. So that is why I've been gone. Today we'll just today we'll just be doing a little bit of catch up on what's been going on. Um, the gardens are in the autumn season now, so quite a bit has transpired over the last couple of weeks, and I really haven't been able to film it. But I will show you some of the garden successes and some of the garden failures with the roses and the dahlias and so on. And a few projects that I've been working on creating some garden rooms. This has been a pretty prolific dahlia. The weird thing is I don't have a clue what it's called because they sent me the wrong dahlia tubers twice. These were supposed to be a natal dahlia and I ended up with this and I cannot find for the life of me what this dahlia is. I looked through all the catalogs and <laughs> when I wrote to them and I told them you sent me the wrong tubers they said they would replace the natal dahlias when the season came up so they sent me some more and I assumed they were natals and they were these again. They were these again. But I've got to say look at all the blossoms on these. This is pretty prolific really not my colors at all but they're awfully bright and cheerful a very rich velvety red and a sunshiny bright yellow so they are bound to put a smile on your face if you love bright colors and you can see that they're just coming up all over the place all those tiny little buds this is going to probably go all the way through October so even though it wasn't the one I chose, it's okay. I like it anyway. The first of the cactus dahlias to open. I love this one. This is just kind of wild and crazy. A wild and crazy dahlia. It's pretty big. It's beautiful. And just look at the, the strange growth habit on this one. Shaggy. It's very shaggy. I have to get a shot at this little midget. This is called Cupid, and it is a sweet pea, and it is one of the sweet peas that were planted in the pots with the dahlias. But <laughs> the blossoms on it have been few and far between, but it's pretty an interesting, tiny little thing. And that's why it's called Cupid, because it's so very, very small. Here we have one of the dahlias that I planted in the old wheelbarrow. This is called Jowie Joshua, and I'm also amazed at these stunning colors here. These are peaches and, well, not really peaches, more like rose beautiful rose colors and yellows just buttery yellows a little bit of brightness there just beautiful two inch dahlia uh, it's just getting buds all over the place and this too as most dahlias is probably going to bloom pretty prolifically all the way through the fall almost all the dahlias that were planted in pots are doing pretty well. Now these were pretty small tubers and so I didn't expect great huge plants out of them. But I think they're doing much better than if I put them in the ground. And over here the Nipita is doing nicely but I wanted to show you this new rose. This was put in this year. This is its first year. I love the way this one's spreading. This is Tequila Sunset. It's not as lush as some of the roses, but it's got a wonderful scent. And you can see the sunset colors, the pinks, the orange, the peaches in this beautiful, healthy plant. Now it's September 1st and it's time for me to fertilize all the roses today. And I, I use liquid fish fertilizer, two tablespoons in a gallon of water, and then I just pretty much drench right around the base of the plant. I really wanted to get a shot of this Molyneux rose, which is blooming. Right now, it's still pretty small because I just planted it this year. It's not even a year in the ground. So it's got about six, seven buds on it, but the color is just what I want to concentrate on. Just look at the gradiating colors in this gorgeous rose. It starts out in the middle with rosy, peachy tones in the center, and then as it gets closer to the edges. It goes to sort of a lemon yellow, a buttercream, and then a little more pale peach, 
and as it goes out we've got pinks and as it goes out to the edge we've got a very delicate and beautiful ivory color it's just a beautiful beautiful rose and I guess this one's about four inches across it's pretty mild but it gets to be about three foot tall four foot wide we hope as it grows in this garden and hopefully we'll see better things next year from it this is another first year rose that we put in into the Kizzy garden the one I um, renovated this is called Penelope it's a rather flat rose with limited amount of petals pinkish white it's got a lovely little center though and a very strong scent I think this is looking pretty healthy today and this too will get fertilizer all the roses will be fertilized today another shot of this beautiful David Austin rose called Alnwick now this is its se second bloom this year and there aren't a whole lot of them blooming on this particular bush it's very kind of a scraggly looking bush but it is August so it's not in its best form but I will tell you that this has an absolutely sweet and very strong scent which is why I um uh oh uh oh I think it just fell apart it's falling apart in my hand oh I'll go put it in the potpourri <laughs> basket I guess anyway that wasn't supposed to happen but it's got a beautiful delicate pale pink and peachy petals and a wonderfully fragrant rose. In fact, it's supposed to be one of the strongest fragrances of the David Austin roses, which is why I planted it right off the porch. Five bushes. It's the only one that's really blooming right now. This one's getting ready to bloom again. And it's had a couple more. This one looks better as far as the bush itself looks pretty good but this is their first year so I'd, I'd say they've done fairly well in this little field of primroses beauty is Marquesa Bocella I showed this one to you earlier in the year and it's a very very pale powder powder pink rose bush shrub small shrub scented but very very lightly this is Poet's Wife, David Austin Rose. It's a shrub, uh, four to five foot. Really beautiful, strong fragrance on this one. This is a climber. Oh, look at the thick, very lush petals on this one. I have have to say that I've had a lot of disappointment uh, this year with some of the roses I planted. This is Kiss Me Kate. You know, she bloomed pretty nicely in the spring. She's supposed to be a repeat bloomer, so I'm hoping to get some more off of this beautiful... The plant itself is quite beautiful and healthy. But I would really... And it's climber. So I, got any, I need to start training it to the fence. But I certainly would love to see one of those big pink lush blooms coming off of this, this plant. If you can't grow roses, grow Rose of Sharon. They bloom incessantly for weeks at a time. They're just as beautiful as roses, I think. And they're trustworthy and they are easy to care for. And they like all kinds of growth conditions. So I have Rose of Sharon's everywhere. And another thing I love about Rose of Sharon is that they make a lot of babies. So if you've planted one or two, you're going to find young ones interspersed underneath amongst them and you can move them quite easily into other gardens. This Rose of Sharon looks more like a mallow or more like a hollyhock but it is a member of the hollyhock family, the mallow family and this one is growing in the front garden but I want to show you that if you look carefully right here and right here two more have sprouted up. Now I'll probably move these to another garden because I don't really need them for background plants but I love this plant it's really really beautiful it comes in different shades of pinks purples and whites and like I said they bloom prolifically for several weeks so they're really great for a background shrub 
Now this spot right here under the weeping mulberry tree has always been a problem. It simply will not grow grass under this tree. Here we go. It won't grow grass. Just nothing but ugly little weeds. And along it is the walkway garden, the pond garden, and another side garden here. So I just joined them all together and I'm laying rock down here on which I will probably put containers with um, tulips and bulbs. Under the mulberry tree, the finished garden room looks so much better than bare dirt with pansies and dahlias and uh, mums and sedums growing and a place to sit. And in the corner we have a little nursery bed full of rows of Sharon babies that I just pick out of the ground. Running right alongside two gardens. So basically it's just an extension. An extension of the frog pond garden and this front yard walkway garden. It just extended beyond with a different look. So, nevertheless, you sit in here, it's a garden room, because you're surrounded by gardens on all sides. And if you walk along the uh, lane here, um, going towards the back to the other garden room that I've been now, working on. This is a shot of the front yard garden that I've been working on and it might look like a overgrown mess to you. And I rarely show this particular side of the front yard garden because it is such a mess. It's just been a jungle in here. N nothing to eat. Not even a garden. Just a mess. Now you might think it still looks bad but you didn't see it three days ago when I started clearing it out. And where you see the board here, this whole thing was full of vines, weeds, periwinkle. The whole ground was just covered with it and little privet bushes that were sprouting up here and there. I have cleared this entire ground off and it's a dry shade. It's just too hard to grow anything in here. So I'm just going to turn this into another garden room and fill it with grit and rock and a couple rock planters and use container plants in here. And I've eliminated a lot of this garden because this was a huge space here and uh, I've taken all of this, all of this out because that's okay with me. Less garden for me to take care of. I've just got enough to do as it is. So I'm going to clear this out and it actually runs adjacent to the little woodland garden that I've been working on. You can see what a mess it is. I know, but this is what things look like until you get them all in order. I picked up a couple bags of inexpensive bulbs from Sam's Club. You can get 50 daffodil bulbs and 50 tulip bulbs for about $17 at Sam's Club. Nothing special about them, but they're inexpensive and what you really want to do with bulbs is really mass, do some mass plantings. So I'll probably use some of them over here in pots and I'll see you in a couple hours when I get a little more work done in this area. Oh, and I got all these rocks. I gathered all these rocks from around that big maple tree. They weren't doing anything, and now I'll be able to put these to use too. So I'm kind of excited about this space now, because it truly was a disaster. Ugh. I had to almost double the size of my walkway here just to get the gravel the rock in to pull it in with the lawnmower and the cart and ended up with seven carts of stone. I'm so glad we had all that stone left over from rebuilding the bridge. I'm still working on it. I still have a lot to do. So I'm just experimenting with a few things here and there like this raised bed. Uh, well, it will be a raised bed. And this isn't anything definite. I'm just putting pots around here and there trying to find some plants and trying to figure out what's going to go in here. So here I have made a long, thin raised bed. And the first thing going in are daffodil bulbs. This would be a beautiful spring bed. Daffodil bulbs and over here I'm going to put in about 30 tulips in the corner. And that's the start. And then um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on top of that but it's definitely going to be a, an all-season garden here in this little garden room.
getting a uh, little bit of rain lately. That's fantastic when you've been working in the garden and putting putting in new things and moving things around a bit. So today is I'm on my last leg here in this garden. I have yanked up so many invasive vines out of here, leaving me with um, some uh, beauty bushes, some Vitex chase bush bushes here, which I love. There's some sedum, sedum lurking in the back. These are the Georgia sunflowers and a lot of nice empty space. While I was removing all those vines, invasive vines and the weeds and the little trees, I uncovered a treasure trove of irises, iris roots, tiny bulbs. Not sure what those bulbs are, but I know they're going to be good because I only buy bulbs that I love. And But they were just buried in there. And I also dug up, because I had to, they were just engulfed in um, vines, a lot of the sedums. Okay, so here is one of the sedums, and as you can see, it's just simply gotten all wrangly. And it's a shame, because they are ready to bloom, and yet they look like they're just flopping over. They're bare, the leaves are not there on these stems. They've just been swallowed and engulfed in vines. So I'm taking them, and I am cutting them way down, like that. And then I'm going to cut their stems into different bits and pieces and simply stick them in the ground. They'll root because they're succulents. They will easily root and make new plants and that will multiply this sedum bed in extensively. Just going to do a cut. Take off all these scrawny roots leaving me with a nice compact plant. I will put it in a nice hole, give it some compost, some nutrition, give it a water, and then just forget about it till next year. So I've relocated these three healthy sedums, pruned them way down. This is Rocket. <laughs> this Rocket. So I pruned down these sedums. I relocated them all together here in a trio, a nice trio. And I have, I have taken the stems with the flowers on them. I'm not going to let these go without blooming all the way. I'm absolutely just going to poke these right into the earth. These will continue to flower. And not only that, they will take root and create an even fuller plant. So wherever you poke in one of these sedum roots, such as this, I could cut this in several different sections, you know, four to six inches deep, and just poke it into the earth, and I'll get a new plant out of this. Um, sedum is simply an amazing, an amazing plant. Succulents really are. They will just take so easily. And a nice thing about this area for the sedum is this is the dry shade, and they don't need a lot of water. They store the water in their stems, and so dry shade. It's um, a partial shade actually, but it does get afternoon sun. This is a great spot for these sedums. And then we've still got the monkey grass underneath the trees, which is fine. I do like to have that, a little bit of that. And you can see that back here, these sedums are doing just fine in partial shade. Another thing you can do with sedums, it makes, it's great for drying. I could take this right now, hang them upside down, and put them in the herbarium and just dry them. And I would have some very beautiful, beautiful dried flowers this autumn. But I'm going to let them open up all the way. Then I'm going to pick them and dry them. what exists in the garden already, and we are using it to multiply the plants and fill in this garden that I have cleared out of vines. I love free plants, don't you? Hello, Rocket. This is our new kitty that my son left here before they leave for their new adventure in Australia. We took Rocket in. So far, he's not getting along very well with Titus. Titus wants to play, and he doesn't. 
but little by little he's getting used to the place. Um, he's kind of got a strange personality. He's <laughs> real serious most of the time. Snarls a lot. Well, turns out Rocket's a garden pal, just like Titus. Really loud around here. Sorry about that, but the lawnmower is going over there. And these are hellebore roots that I ordered off Etsy. So I got 30 little hellebore roots here. And I don't know if you've noticed, but hellebores in a pot are pretty expensive. So I'm going to start these myself. I'm going to root these, get them growing a little bit better in some of my potting mix here. And I want to put these in the woodland garden, uh, among other places. So we'll see how these go. We'll check in on them every couple weeks and see if they're ready to put in. That was 30 roots for $35, so that would be actually not bad if they all, if they all take. That's a pretty good price. So they're nice and wet. Got these lovely little roots here. And kind of like the little rows of Sharon trees. And here they are. Little bitty hellebores. I'll try a couple of them in the pot here, and then I'll put a couple of them in individual trays. Okay, let's give it a go. So this became a raised bed, a slightly raised bed, deep enough to plant daffodil bulbs eight inches. Eight inches down, so that's going to be great. I've got the little hellebores growing here in some pots. See how they take. Hopefully these pansies will spread. Um, I'll do some fall planted seeds in here. I'm not sure what I want yet. I've got Spanish bluebell bulbs in this pot, tulip bulbs in this pot, tulip bulbs in this pot, odd bulbs in this pot, more hellebores in here, pansies and Spanish bluebells planted underneath. What else? This is a Tessa the Dribbleville's rose that I pruned way down. And it is going to be a deep crimson red. And I'm going to train it to climb on this cattle panel. And as you can see, this is the one of the vines, which is a honeysuckle, and it is dying because I cut the roots down on this side. Lead me up that plenty of honeysuckle that I don't need anymore. And what else? Got some little wilted nasturtiums that I transplanted from another garden. Here is a rose that I transplanted. It's a ground drift rose, and it was doing horribly in another spot, which is buried under all those twigs and everything in here. This is a wild rose. It's beautifully scented. It's amazing. And it just gets huge. I want to try to control it here in this corner. And I don't know what will be going in here, but surely something. We have a big, beautiful crimson colored red chrysanthemum getting ready to pop. More little violas and pansies. And all in all, I really like the transformation here. Really like it. This bed is just about cleared out of anything I don't like. I've redone the irises. I found out I, I ended up having about 26 irises that have just been smothering over there in that space over there. I planted three or four rows of Sharon's in the bare spaces just because I love them and because I need something tall in that back corner. And a total transformation here. Completely. Looks completely different than it did. Clean it up a little bit and look a lot better. Now here, another total transformation because this was also full of invasive vines. This is getting ready for the bulbs. This is the woodland garden. I've decided to take all the hostas out of here and put them in the hosta garden behind me. 
I'm going to save this for woodland plants and the little lilac bush and hopefully those hellebores, linden roses will grow in those pots and I'll transplant them in here and oh goodness lots of um, some foxgloves these are perennial foxgloves right here so we'll see what happens and what I can do with this space but right now it's just getting cleared out so that I can use it but it looks pretty good I think <laughs> 